All right, here we are in the Ahrefs site audit tool. Let's talk about some of the top issues. We've got two here that we're gonna talk about in this video, the 404 page and the 4XX page. So what are these? I actually believe these are the same thing in Ahrefs. I could be wrong about that. Let me see, 404. Yeah, 404 and 4XX. I, these should be the same because 4XX, whenever you see 4XX, that just means 400 something, anything in the 400s. Um, so 403, 402, 404, any 40 something error is going to be 4XX. That's what that means. 3XX, same thing. Three, uh, that's uh, any anytime you get a response code of three, 301, 302, 303, whatever. I don't know what the other response codes are in the 300s but that's what that is. You might see 5XX, that's anything in the 500s. So I'm not sure why Ahrefs has these as two separate items because I think they're exactly the same thing. Um, the only difference is this is more specific. So this is obviously 404s. This could contain 402s, right? Um, so 404 is a subset of that. But you know, in this case, they're both the same. So these are, you know, should you work on these issues? Th these are generally important issues uh, a 404 just means that the as the bot was crawling the site, it found a link on the site, it clicked that link, or it followed that link, and that link was pointing to a page that no longer, that doesn't exist. So a 404, in this case, they return a 404 response code, which is uh, not found. Um, and that, that just means you have a broken link on the site somewhere. So are these super crucial important? It depends. Y yes, they're pretty, they, you don't want a lot of these, right? Every site has a few broken links. That's going to happen. Ideally, you clean those up. It's a bad user experience on important pages. Um, but, you know, you might have cases, you know, we've seen cases where, like, you have an event tool or something on the site that's got, like, a calendar of events. And you have all these old events. And they're linked, maybe, they're, maybe the event is linking to the event page on the site. And that event was, like, a year or two ago. And you have, maybe, you know, I've seen sites where they have hundreds of these events. And those events are old. Nobody cares about them anymore. And so they delete all those pages, those event pages, but the links to them still exist in the, the calendar of events, right? So then you end up with all these broken links. You know, is that a huge issue for users? No, because a user's not going to go back to events that happened like four years ago, probably, in that calendar and try to click all the links, um, unless there's something wrong with them. So uh, it, it's, no, it's not a big deal for the user. Generally, it's not a good idea to have a ton of broken links on your site for Google's purposes. I actually don't know. If you have a ton of broken links, that's going to generally be bad. So if you have a page that's ranking pretty well, and then a bunch of those links on that page are broken, that page will start ranking worse as a result. I actually don't know what would happen if, you know, that could be because of the user behavior. That could be because Google's sort of looking at 404s as a percentage of links on the page and saying, um, you know, if there's a certain, above a certain percent, we're going to ding this page. It, I'm actually not sure which of those happens. So I don't know if the use case for the event tool would be a problem. But I would probably try to avoid creating a lot of 404s on a site. So like if you had that weird scenario where you have this event calendar, I would try to sort of make it a practice that when you're updating that event calendar, you also delete the event from the calendar, you know, or maybe you get rid of the link. Or maybe instead of doing that, when you remove an event, the better idea probably for events is when you get rid of an event, you redirect that old event URL back to the main events page, right? Um, that would be, that would solve both problems. That would solve the whole problem just by doing that. So it kind of, you know, if you're generating a lot of 404 errors and those are increasing over time, it's sometimes it's just a process change with the way you're managing the site and what you're doing. And it's probably worth doing that. You know, if you have thousands of old pages, I've seen, I've seen this where you've got thousands of 404s, right? Yeah, I would probably, it's going to be a big task, but I would probably start trying to fix those um, if possible. You know, whatever that looks like. Um, I would start trying to fix them. You know, if you've got tons of them, you kind of have to regroup and plan how you're going to actually do it. You know, are these really 404s that, need to be cleaned up? Are they on blog posts? And then they just, like, the question is, why do you have so many internal links with 404s? That's usually, uh, that's usually a problem. You know, it means you're, you're linking to some page and then if you're, if you're doing this at scale, 
it's probably because of some some system that's happening that where things are getting deleted, but the links to those things are not getting deleted, like the events example uh, I just gave you. You know that if that's happening, you probably just need some sort of process change with uh, the way you're going about doing things. Um, and ideally, you're just redirecting those old URLs to something new. But let's look at these on this project and see what um, what's happening with this. So the way this works is you might get a list of you know, if, you, if you're in Ahrefs, you might see this. If this comes from us and you get this in like an Excel spreadsheet, you might get a, a list of with the URL and then where it was first found. So what this is saying is this, this link doesn't exist. So if I click this and I go here, I'll get a 404. Yeah, so couldn't find that one. And then it's saying first found at, it's saying the link was found on this page. So if I go to this page, oops, that's the page that didn't exist. If I go to this page, that one doesn't exist either. How's that? Let's see what's going on there. So what this should be saying is that it was found on this page and it links to this and this link doesn't work. But it looks like this link doesn't work either. Move permanently. Is that really the status code I'm getting on that? Let's find out. Let's ask curl. Copy that link. Three oh one and then a four oh four. Okay. So I'm getting a three oh one to this page, and then this page is getting a four oh four. Okay. So what's happening there? Collection sweaters, products, copy of navy blue v-neck sweater, copy of navy blue v-neck sweater. Okay, here's what's going on. So this is kind of this is kind of a confusing situation here. What's happening? Just because there's like a redirect here that's like confusing. What's what's going on? So basically, what's happening is this site redirects everybody to the HTTPS version of the URL. You see that? This is saying it was first found on the non-HTTPS version. But when I try to load the non-HTTPS version, it redirects me to the HTTPS version, which is this. So. That's just a weird quirk of something. It suggests that this this link actually exists somewhere. And my guess is if we scroll down, we might find it. Let's see, what is that called? Copy, that's that one. Copy. Yeah, I'm not, that one's confusing just because I'm not sure why Ahrefs is finding that. Like, how did it find it at all? Because it doesn't appear that this link, I mean, I, I gotta assume basically what happened is this link must, there must be some page on the site that links to this URL. And I could find it, I could dig through this, the, the, the result and find it. But there's probably a page on the site that links to this URL. And then that URL, 301 redirects to here. For whatever reason, Ahrefs is saying that it was fat, the link was found on this page, but it, it wasn't found on that page because that page just redirects to that page. So this is a little bit of a bug, it seems like, or something, something, some quirk with how Ahrefs is working in this case. But I, I'm not really worried about that. What I'd probably do if I was worried about it is figure out, like go, go into the crawl, like the internal pages, and try to find what is linking to this page. Um, maybe I can find it here. Uh, in links, yes. Okay, so that's pretty cool. I can click this. This is the URL that is that is that I think is linked from somewhere. I can go to in links, and now that's showing me the pages that link to this page. So let's open one of these. Cardigan, cool. Navy cardigan for men. Let me move my face so I can see the URL here products copy of navy blue blue net, uh, sweater let me inspect this because this will probably be the non HP version or HPS yeah see so there's a link basically somebody created this blog post a long time ago added a link to there it is too right there added a link to this product but did not use the HTTP S version um, they use the HTTP version 
So when you click that, it gets redirected to HTTPS, but then the HTTPS version does not exist. So it's a little bit of a confusion. It's a little bit confusing on what's happening, but basically that URL just doesn't exist. So if I wanted to fix that, all I'd have to do is go to this blog, this blog post here, and change that URL uh, to something else. Uh, you know, and again, a lot of times when you start seeing uh, 404s popping up on a site, it's indicative of, of you probably need a process change. So what happened here is that this product was, you know, ideally you need a process change. This isn't always feasible, right? But um, this product was removed, presumably. It's a product, collection sweaters, products, navy blue cardigan sweater. What we could do, we could see if there's a, a navy blue cardigan sweater anywhere. Let's see, sweaters and joggers. Whoops, where'd that go? Sweaters and joggers. Navy blue. I don't know, I could use Google for that too. Site colon bladenblue.com. Look for it that way. But uh, it's possible that product exists and I just need to change the URL. Right, and I could, or I could go find that and change it here. Uh, it's possible that I just need to get rid of it, you know. Um, you know, it's possible that maybe there's still, maybe that product doesn't exist, but we still have cardigans, and I can just change that link to the other cardigans. Right? Um, alternatively, what you'd want to do is a sort of a process change. If this was happening a lot, is you know, ideally, I've said this before, and it's usually a good practice to. In, instead of just deleting content or deleting products, do something else. So ideally you don't delete products or delete content, but if you do, redirect that page, right? So either, you know, what REI does is when they no longer have a product, they still keep the page online and they just say this product's no longer in stock, but, and then they link to other products. Here's some other, you know, find, I think they put a CTA there that says find similar products. So they try to get you to your other, the other products. That, that, would be a, that would be a possibility. Another possibility is just to, when you remove this product, if we removed it, just redirect that product URL to the most relevant product URL that still exists. Or redirect that product URL to the category, to the product category, right? Um, or something like that. That's usually a, a good idea. And the reason this matters, uh, it, it sometimes it doesn't matter really that much, right? If you have a site that has products on it and those products are not driving a lot of search traffic and there's not a lot of links to those products and you just delete that product because it's gone it's probably gonna have a minimal impact on what's going on but the reason this is good practice is because when you're deleting products you don't know if other people other people might have linked to that product and you want to preserve that link equity ideally and so ideally you redirect that link that that URL to another relevant product um, or to like the product category page that's also relevant um, so that both for the user, if somebody clicks that link on that other site, they don't want to get a 404 page. They want to get redirected to the most relevant page on the site. Um, or uh, for Google, for, the, for, for uh, search rankings, uh, redirecting those URLs is going to be, uh, is going to help as well. Uh, and then, you know, as a last resort, I guess you can delete it and just send it to a 404 and it's not the end of the world. Um, Certainly, but there are there are some better ways to handle that if you can if you are able to do that. So that's what's going on there. Let's take a look at a few of these other ones. These are probably a little different. First found here. Let's jump to that. Ah, so here's a page, and I think I know what's going on here. These are all links to products. I don't know if you can see my URL bar down here. These are all links to products, and I think some of these probably just don't exist. Oh, so that link just in general is broken, so it's missing the domain, as you can see. So that's a quick fix. We could, we could fix that, especially if that still exists. Some of these don't exist anymore. But this is actually an important page because I think we have this on the long sleeve shirts product pages, and so, you know, multiple links on this page that explain the products uh, are broken. So we'd want to, um, we definitely want to fix those on this page because this page in particular is kind of an important page. Uh, so we don't want that linking to broken links. So that one we'd probably want to fix for sure. 
And then let's see, collection, long sleeve shirts. So my guess is these long sleeve shirts, I'm gonna have the same, it's all the same problem. Yeah, so it's found on that long sleeve shirt page. That's what all those are. This one, this is a this is the HTTP redirect issue, same as the other one. So that's kind of the same thing that's happening there. So probably a blog post somewhere that's linking to the non -h, non -h, non secure version, and then the secure version redirects and uh, to the secure version, and the secure, secure version was deleted at one point. So I'd want to clean up those. So those those ones at the top are all pretty much the same, and then these ones down here are all from that product page that I do want to clean up. So you know. In summary here on 400 errors, and kind of the same thing on 4XX, if we go back to uh, that overview and we look at the 4XXs, these are all, this is just all the same things, but you might see 403s in here, you might see other ones. It's kind of the same thing. You probably want to clean those up, especially if you don't have a lot of them. Um, and then think about, is there a, a process change we can make to either ensure that we don't have broken links on the site uh, or you know whatever it is, redirect those those links if they break to somewhere else, um, if it makes sense, uh, or you know some other way to to avoid um, generating uh, broken links over time uh, on the site, or you could just get in and clean them up every so often. But uh, but yeah, those are probably ones you want to fix.